For the last year or so, I've put together quite the lineup of gear, so going into 2023, this is what's in my camera bag. So let's get right into it, the camera. I like to run a dual camera system. For my main camera, I have the FX3, which is what I'm recording on now. And this by far has been my favorite camera I have ever owned. So this is my main camera for client work and it was my YouTube camera for a little bit. And although it's a pretty expensive camera, I've loved the image, the features, the quality I can get out of this camera and I really don't regret it. I like that it is a video first camera and not that any other camera is too much different, but most of the buttons and the settings are made specifically for people shooting video and I primarily focus on video. So it's just a nice little feature to have. I also take a lot of photos on this camera and although it is a 12 megapixel camera, it is perfectly fine for social media. If you're gonna blow with the pictures, hang them up, print them out, then maybe you should consider a different camera, but just for your everyday social media pictures, this camera is perfectly capable. Some of the other features that I like is the 10-bit and the S-Log3 picture profile to get that awesome dynamic range. And also I like that I can shoot up to 120 frames per second in 4K. You can always get some crispy images just by putting it in 120 frames per second. So that is nice to have. And still by far one of my favorite features is the dual native ISO. I can bump this up to 12,800, especially in this darker studio. And it doesn't seem like it loses any quality at all. Let's move on to the B camera. I have the FX30 and honestly, this camera is also great. If I didn't already have the FX3, I would really consider getting two FX30s for the price of just one FX3. It's that good. This is a Super 35 sensor. It's not the full frame that the FX3 has. And I do notice a little bit more grain in my images and obviously it's not as good in low light, but for the price, that's perfectly fine. I love that it has the exact same FX3 body. And also I like that I'm more comfortable vlogging with this camera, putting it in situations where I wouldn't want to put that expensive FX3 in. And although I would not want anything to happen to the FX30 because it is still an expensive camera, I would rather lose the FX30 than the FX3. So you can still shoot 120 frames per second in 4K with this camera. However, a downside is that it has a lot more of a crop than the FX3. And I've noticed that those images are pretty grainy when I shoot them. So I'm not sure if I have to add more light or if that's just the nature of it cropping in so much. This is a 26 megapixel camera. So I end up shooting a lot of my images on this camera. One of the downsides that I just noticed actually a few weeks ago is that this camera doesn't have a burst mode, but I guess that's okay. And another upside is glass for this camera is so much cheaper than if you were getting full frame glass for the FX3. So it's awesome that I can get a few more options on the FX30 and not spend as much as I would on the FX3. The next piece of gear that's been in my camera bag a lot is my new Mavic 3 Classic. I just got this a few months ago and it has been a huge upgrade for my Mini 2. So the reason I decided to invest in the Mavic 3 Classic is because it really checked all the boxes that prevented me from sometimes using my Mini 2. It has auto tracking, so if I don't have anyone with me, I can still get shots of myself with the auto track. It has obstacle avoidance. I'm not the best pilot, so that is always great to have and prevents me from destroying the super expensive drone and also it has a way better image and it has that d-log picture profile so i can really work with the colors a little bit more in post so one of the features that really surprised me on the mavic 3 is the battery life honestly if you're just going out there getting a few clips you could probably get away with just one battery i ended up picking up a second one just to be safe but this thing lasts forever. So if you're not going out there all day and shooting and just getting a few clips here and there, kind of like I do, you can get away with just one battery. One of the downsides of the drone is just the size. I tested out the Air S2 and it is still larger than the Air S2 and it is massive compared to the Mini 3, but just for all the features it offers, I'm willing to put up with the size. Next we have the C camera, which is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I am an Apple sheep, so I'm always gonna have an iPhone with me, but I think we can all agree that iPhones have a solid camera and it is probably one of the better video cameras for content creation. This is the perfect camera because it's always in my pocket. So if I need a quick clip, I know that I can get it on this phone and I'm still gonna get a quality video. 
And if you're a content creator and you have a MacBook, then this is just gonna work so seamlessly, especially with AirDrop. That's probably my favorite feature. I can just get clips to my MacBook, to my iPhone in just a few seconds. And if you do happen to have an iPhone, you should check out Ghost Tech. They sent me over these cases to try, but I wasn't paid to say anything good about them. I will say they look nice and feel super sleek and not extremely bulky. They're also supposed to be really protective, but I'm not dropping my phone to test that out. And if you happen to pick one up, use my code, you get a small discount and I get a small kickback. So let's talk about the glass options that I have for my two cameras. I basically have the focal lengths from 10 to 400 covered with these lenses. I have a mix of APS-C and full frame, but I have a 10 to 20 for my FX30. That is an APS-C lens. I have a 16 to 35 that I use for YouTube videos, vlogging on the FX3 since it is a full frame lens. And then I have my main lens, a 24 to 105. And then also my brand new lens, I have a 100 to 400 Sigma that has been amazing. So these are all F4 lenses, but if you know how to use it right, you can still get that separation and blurry background. However, I am thinking of maybe selling my 24 to 105, upgrading to a Sigma or first gen Sony 24 to 70. Although I told myself I wasn't gonna mess around with my gear and purchase any more or sell, but we'll see. So I'm always changing camera bags, but this latest bag I got from Amazon and I really picked it up for three main reasons. One, it looks sharp. Two, it has enough room for what I'm gonna take out vlogging or just shooting. And three, it has a protective shell to keep all that expensive gear safe. Some of the items in the bag that are also very important, but maybe not as fun are my ND filters, my diffusion filters. I usually always have a diffusion filter on any of my lenses and then I have step up rings so that I only have a few diffusion and ND filters and then I can have all my lenses covered. For the Mavic 3, I have the Polar Pro ND filters. They were kind of expensive, but I tried two different sets on Amazon and none of them fit. So I don't know what was going on. It's probably because it was so new, but I ended up just getting the Polar Pro version. One last item that's gonna be very important going into 2023 as I do more freelance work is my RS3. And I know I've been saying this a lot, but this has been by far my favorite gimbal, just for one reason. If you balance it and your camera's on there, you can just turn it off and it'll fold itself and you can turn it back on and it'll just unfold and be balanced. So that just saves so much time, so much of a headache of having to rebalance everything. And again, as I do more freelance work, this is gonna be a very important tool. This year, one of my biggest goals is to focus a lot less on the gear and just on creating. So go ahead, hit the subscribe button, maybe like the video if you wanna support and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.